All right, so they're really, uh, you know, ACOG says there are three fetal heart rate categories. There's normal, and there's abnormal, right? Um, normal means that the rate is within those normal limits. We talked about 110 to 160, and obviously that's beats per minute, all right? We want to have normal beat to beat, that's B to B, Variability. Sorry, I left out a letter there, but remember we said that was 6 to 25. All right. And we want to have um, accelerations present. And variable D cells are okay. So they can be there, maybe they're not there, it's not a huge deal. Okay. So abnormal. On the other end of the spectrum is persistent D cells. So what is a persistent D cell? We said a persistent D cell is a D cell in which, um, I'm sorry, this should be persistent late D cells. That's important. Persistent late D cells are those in which late D cells are occurring with more than 50% of the contractions, all right? And you're going to be acting if you see this, okay? And it's also concerning if there's absent beat-to-beat -beat variability. And if this is the case, you're probably going to deliver, all right? This is urgent, okay? So what about all the stuff that's in between these? Well. This is the third category that ACOG has, and they just call this indeterminate. So let's go to the next slide and talk about indeterminate, um, the indeterminate category. All right, and this is what you're going to see <clears throat> most of the time. If you get concerned at all about a tracing, it's almost always going to be indeterminate. And so there are some things you can do. Um, if it's indeterminate due to, um, say, progressive hypoxia, so you're getting too much cord compression, one of the things you can do is what's called floating the cord. So float cord. And that's basically you're giving mom an IUPC or an intrauterine pressure catheter, and you do an amnio infusion. So you're using that catheter and inserting normal saline. Okay? And that normal saline basically does exactly this. It floats the cord so that when a contraction occurs the cord doesn't get compressed quite as much. Very cool, I think. Um, another thing is you can reposition mom so that she's not uh, compressing the great vessels. If, you can, if mom's laying on her back, the heavy fetus and the uterus is laying on those great vessels. Mom's blood returns affected, so obviously baby's blood returns affected. Uh, most people like the left lateral decubitus position for this. So lay mom on her side. Either side usually works fine. Um, you want to give mom some oxygen. You want to stop any pitocin or oxytocin. And, you know, if mom's having contractions that are too frequent that doesn't allow, allow the placenta to recover completely and doesn't allow fetal oxygen status to be where it should, you can uh, give some tocolysis. And that is usually terbutaline. And if you're not getting the accelerations you want, then that's when you do scalp stimulation. So just go down, rub, put your finger in the cervix, rub baby's little head, and you'll get a little uh, scalp stimulation. And you should see a little excel pop up. Or alternatively, um, it's probably better because you're decreasing the risk of introducing infection, you can use a vibroacoustic stimulator. Um, it's basically a little, a little buzzer that you put on mom's belly, get the baby to move a little bit, wake him or her up, and you see an excel. Okay, so that's what you do if you have indeterminates. So, all right, so we're about finished here. Let's